talk about the bands here. We have Abathur banned by Too Hard and the Tyrael banned by Vega Squadron. So considering that we're we're on Dragonshire, um Abathur, well, I mean Abathur is, is a solid ban, um uh, no matter what. In the last week we've seen that he's just one of those picks that I don't know, it turns out to be so strong can, since you're really flexible with him. You can choose, okay, do I do I want to copy my assassin for extra damage output? Uh do I need that warrior to um to sustain and fights a little bit longer and it just makes you really versatile. And we have the first pickup by I2 Heart, Tassadar, and the first two picks by Vega Squadron, uh, Tychus and Arphis. Yeah. So, so far, no, not that many surprises right there. Yeah. yeah. Oh, and we see Uther just... Oh, Uther and uh, False Set. Pickups. Oh, maybe? Maybe not False Set? <laughs> Seems like they're not sure yet, but of course you get some more time after your first pick, if you have two in a row. Um, well, I think there's a uh, little bug with that, th uh, with the drafting interface, so it's possible that, um, yeah, it's gonna be false that. Sometimes it just gets re-picked for some reason. Yeah, okay, um, so... Regarding eye to heart esports, um, it's quite interesting that they went for uh, Tassadar and Uther like first pick. Um, they want to be sure that they get the best uh, supports in the game right now, I think. Mm -hmm. But that as well uh, leaves, for example, Rega open for Vega Squadron, even though they have no uh, Tassadar with um, Tigers, they could still go for either Bloodlust or, of course, Ancestral Healing. Um, since you said that Tassadar, uh, you, you'd count Tassadar as a support, I, I cast it <laughs> with uh, Tetra yeah. last week and he said, uh, Tassadar very much an assassin, what do you think about it? I think uh, the difference bete between uh, Tassadar as a support and as an assassin is that you can play him, uh, that you can play a team with only him as support. Mm -hmm. uh, and you still have some kind of support. That's not possible if you go for uh, an assassin. But of course, still, Tessada does a huge amount of damage. Right. And I think it also depends very much on his talents. I mean, what, what, what you pick, you can go towards that damage route and you can go towards a little more versatile support route. But right now, I think pretty much any team is going to go that assassin route, going to take the damage output. Oh, actually, kind of surprised to see Rega already taken here by Vega Squadron. Since Uther was already picked, a uh, little bit surprising there. Um, Stitches, of course, uh, Solid Initiator, um, good choice. Yeah, they're just uh, going for very standard and good picks, nothing out of the ordinary. And um, I'm actually surprised as well because I would uh, have gone Rega on the last pick mm -hmm. because uh, I'm quite sure that I Too Hard won't try to go for another support or support you know um. mm -hmm. <laughs> true uh, definitely true I mean they do have they, they can wait a little bit longer with their warriors now and possibly chose a specialist but nope gonna go straight for the Danube well uh, they could still go for Nazebo but I think yeah uh, some more melee is good as well since yeah. they have a Nubarak and Noob and Illidan, so we have like a three-hero three, uh, three hero assassin setup. Lots of damage potential, um, good initiation with the Noob, and of course um, the Divine Storm with Uther. Uh, looks like a really solid pickup for Eye to Heart. Yeah, and I think uh, it's pretty nice that they took Illidan because uh, he synergizes very well with Tassadar and Uther, because you need some kind of burst heal or burst uh, burst shield to keep him alive. Something mm -hmm. like Rega doesn't work too well, or even Brightwing. You don't really want to go for Brightwing and Illidan in the same combo. Can't see a while. Uh, the map is going to be Dragonshire. And we have only 20 seconds left here for Vega Squadron to choose their final pick. Yeah, they definitely need some more damage. Yeah. Um, 
Let's see, what are they gonna go for here? Nova? Nova, Vala... Even, maybe even Raynor, I'm not sure. Possibly Raynor, yeah. yeah. Or... Okay. Oh, Vala, okay. I, I was just gonna talk about Vala, um, since she's not... Um, not a common pick anymore in EU. But every once in a while you do see her, and uh, she's still pretty strong, so... Um, especially with... Uh, uh, especially with the healing from Rhaegar. If that's gonna come in, I'm, I'm still not too sure about that, since they do have Arthas and uh, Stitches, some solid warriors, to um, yeah, to just keep that sustain up. So, uh, not too sure uh, if he's gonna go for the healing, uh, the ancestral healing on Rhaegar. Yeah, I, I'm not quite sure. I, I think he can go both. But, yeah, he might, it, it is possible to go Bloodlust. Because uh, lately we do see a lot of ancestral healing combos, even where you could go bloodlust. Because it's just so much heal, and you can focus on damage uh, on the other talents. Um, and together with uh, Walla, I think they got some some kind of synergizes in the team because of. Uh, the route from Arthas and then go f going for the Reign of Vengeance from the Valar to be able mm -hmm. to get in a lot of stun. Yeah, and it, you can t keep everyone together with Tychus and uh, Stitches, of course, to uh, to single one out, someone out. Um, really nice elimination combo. Yeah, I think they really need Stitches against uh, False Set actually, because they don't have. Uh, well, they have to get in Tychus to really do much to him because if he is out of uh, he is uh, far away from the actual f actual fight you really need stitches or some kind of a very mobile hero to get to him so i think we're going to see a false set on top lane as usual and uh, who's going to be his counter here mm. Mm. <laughs> i'm not too sure yeah. maybe maybe vala yeah, I thought but about it as well. I think okay. they'll go with Stitches mid for sure. And yeah, Stitches, Arthas mid. Uh, possibly Tychus <laughs> alongside that. Then uh, Rager bottom. Yeah. I, I was about to say maybe they even go Rome with uh, Arthas and uh, Rhaegar. That mm -hmm. might be a possibility. Okay, that, that works as well. I don't know, but uh, can they put out enough damage to get um, get an early gank? Well, I doubt it, right? Yeah, um, they themselves not, but uh, the heroes that are on the lanes actually with Tigers and Valor. I mean, I like the strategy where you where you hide your high damage potential and then just have I don't know, like the um, have someone just sitting there as candy and then you snack those up um, and go around roaming with the high high damage dealers. But that's of course a little bit dangerous, especially uh, in the early game when you don't know where your opponent's at. And um, uh, that's very much high risk, but also high reward if you do it. Okay, we're loading into the map. Dragonshire and our teams are i 2 Heart and Vega Squadron. And i 2 Heart currently in 5th place, Vega Squadron 7th place. 2 wins, 3 losses for i 2 Heart, 1 win. Four losses for Vega Squadron. Heroes, prepare for combat. Yes. And uh, Vega Squadron spawned on the right side, right? Um, the yes. Side? They are on the right side. <laughs> so on the left side, we have our blue team, I Too Hard, Ten and seconds. there have Falstad on the top line, Tassadar in the mid, Five. alongside Illidan and Uther, Three. and bottom lane is a new Barak. On the right side, our red team, Vega Squadron. They have Arphis, Vala, both in the top lane. Tychus is taking the middle, and oh, he's gonna be joined here by Stitches and Rhaegar. Yeah, um, Tassadar already used his Oracle, so they know exactly where Stitches is. So they'll be quite defensive, I think, because Stitches can be very annoying in the early game. Yep, he's gonna saddle up, and Possibly join Rhaegar down here in the middle. 
And I doubt that this uh, gang squad is actually going to do all that much here. Um, Illumin is going to move bottom as well. And Anoop does have that uh, really solid stun. And we have Rhaegar and Stitch is really close to each other. So a stun would work out pretty well for them. Yeah, but uh, before you have to get in those hooks. And it's not that easy actually against this comp. Because, yeah, especially Illidan is a very um, squishy, uh, like... Yeah, he can move uh, very fast. Yeah, but Imran is doing a good job. Ooh, there comes the hook, but good stun and solid follow-up here by Uther with a double stun there. Um, never mind, Stitches does get away and he tries to hook Uther in return, but that didn't quite work out here. Yeah, so bottom shrine now for Eye to Heart. And Arthur's being way out of position there, but he's gonna get away. Oh, Stitch is taking a lot of damage here. Illidan is on the hunt, but nope, he's not gonna grab him. Oh, Uther's pulled into the tower, taking a lot of damage, but not quite going down. There comes the final blow on Uther. Stitch is doing a good job. Arthas does get away, but Leoric is on to him. Oh, this is gonna be tough. Nice job. Tyke is with a grenade, getting him, pushing him towards him, and that worked out really well here for Vegas Squadron. Nice early pickups for them. Yeah, very nice uh, counter ganks, yeah. And it looks like Valle is going to contest top, but Falstad is going to scare her away. So, no two shrines here for Vega Squadron. Yeah, Falstad, uh, some good area control from him. And, um, yeah, it looks like I2 Heart can keep these shrines. No, bottom shrine is going to be contested. But uh, with three heroes down here, I think they should be able to take it. A noob should go for um, a little stun there. Probably still in cooldown. There comes the stun. Nice stun, and maybe they can block Arthas. Yeah, good job so far. Noob trying to get in the way. The Auric following him, but they get in tower range. And three against three, possibly not the best idea here uh, if you're already in that tower range. Oh, and we have the Dragon Knight now being picked up here by i 2 Hard Esports. Very nicely done. And it looks like. Oh, and the Burak is out of position there, but quickly Deep Tunnels out of there. Yeah, and uh, some solid solid aggression coming in the middle lane. Uh, Dragon Knight are doing some good work here on these towers, but not opting to... Ooh, nice hook. Getting him completely out of position, but ooh, this might be a bad idea. Arthas is taking some massive damage. Tychus comes in to save the day. The Auric taking a lot of damage, but he gets out of there. Stitches might be able to hook him, but ooh, no, he gets a noob. Yeah. Very nice escape there by Illidan. And it looks like... Grimskull is going to be able to do a lot more damage here with the... Yeah, he should go for that gate though, otherwise it's really troublesome for them to actually get in there and fight the other heroes. Uh, Dragon Knight is up now, so they do have to go back to their lanes and soak up that much XP. Um, so far both teams pretty much even in the XP game. And everyone's just going back. Tassada alongside Uther and, um, and Illidan now taking the hard camp here. Yeah, um, the easy camp as well being taken here by Vegas Verdon and oh, they won't be going for the heart now, so only pushing bottom at the moment. But it's yeah, we have uh, Ribe on Felstad, and um, I don't think they've used it yet. Yeah. There he goes. Now he's used it on the easy camp here in the middle. And it looks like Stitches wants to hook a Nubarak, but uh, that's not going to happen soon here. And now they're going for the hard camp of their own. Um, of course, putting on some counter pressure now that the hard mobs are in the top lane. And uh, let's see, Falstead not opting to go uh, and continue to push with them, but instead go in the middle lane here. Maybe they can get a gank on, on Tychus. Nope, he's careful. He's pretty careful. And there comes the reveal. I know where everyone's at. And Stitch is not getting that hook. Really careful play here by i 2 Heart, doing a good job so far. Yeah, they got the easy camp now bottom and they'll be able to push a lot harder now at the bottom fort. Ooh, solid stun there, but the towers still have lots and lots of ammo. Maybe they can get a grab on. Nope, uh, Illidan gets in there, but only dishes out some damage towards the minions. Yeah, we got the next shrines coming up in 20 seconds. And the bot shrine is definitely going to go for i 2 Heart Esports, but I don't think they're going to get the top shrine as well. Yeah, but some tremendous pressure coming in here for i 2 Heart. Um, four easy mobs, or four easy mercs going towards that camp. 
Um, and the fort actually taking a lot of damage. They already got the gate here. And this actually takes all, or almost all of the heroes for Vega Squadron to get down there. Yeah, it looks like they gonna get the shrine back. But they, as they don't have anybody mid, uh, no big problem so far for Eye to Heart. They're gonna get 10 very soon, so Vega Squadron shouldn't really fight there. Yeah, they're gonna retreat right away. Um, they're probably gonna be 10 pretty soon here as well. And now middle is completely uncontested, in control of Vega. And they have no idea, they don't want to go for that dragon, uh, dragon right now. Uh, possibly because of the um, of the talents just coming up. And maybe we have the time to check it, but I don't know, it looks like the next team fight is going to be incoming here pretty soon. Yeah. Uh, now that Arthas is also joining the fray, um, no real good hooks from Dizzy yet. They definitely yeah. need those hooks to um, get the right engagement for them. Ooh, nice stun! Getting Rhaegar and Stitches, and now everyone just moves in. But a little bit, um, not that much uh, so solid focus firing. But Ilden, nevertheless, gets Valor. Stitches falls on the other hand. And also Arthas taken out. Really solid fight here for Eye to Heart. Even Rhaegar tanked a lot of damage. A nice body block here by Illidan. And they might even get Tigers, but oh, this is gonna be a close fight. Wow. Mm. Illidan jumping on top of everything here and he gets back, but still being taken out here by the tower. I think they would have been better off just going for the fort. Uh, yeah. Now they have to retreat and it looks even they, like... They might even lose Guther here. Oh, oh. oh good job so by Slimer. Yeah. Taking a lot of risks there, but um, he did get Ufer in the retreat. Um, I don't know if that was actually necessary, since he was also taking a lot of damage from the fort, but um, I don't know. Better be safe than sorry. Oh, solid hook. What the heck happened what? there? <laughs> yeah, nice back over there. Um, as we were uh, talking about the heroic abilities before, we have Putrid Bile and Ancestral Healing, as well as Syndragosa uh, from uh, Vegas Gridon. Um, some really weird pickups. Uh, at least Putrid Bile, I've not seen in pro matches whatsoever. Yeah, I didn't either. Maybe, uh, let's, let's talk about their composition, maybe it makes sense, but I don't know, with Syndragosa and Putrid Bile, uh, yeah. not that much. I mean, you, you want to stick together with Purtive Bile, but I don't know. Oh, really good stun! And they get the grab on Arthas, really sandwiching him in there. But, oh, Valor with a nice retreating option there. Good job. Yeah, the Reign of Vengeance definitely paying off in those fights. Um, but on the other hand, I think the synergizes that they want is slow the enemies and then just run around with stitches and slow them even more. Yeah, but I mean, um, the Syndragosa really only uh, works, I mean, the, the stun only works for uh, for the minions. Oh no, we have another fight here, Tigus goes down so quickly, there comes the Divine Storm, and ooh, Stitches, he's taking a lot of damage, but good Ancestral Healing. Now everything's clumped up, now his uh, ultimate is really coming into play, but it doesn't work out in the end. And Rega might also fall here, there comes the Syndragosa, not really hitting anything. Um, but Arthas might actually get away here and might even get a kill out of this. It would have been a lot of damage. Nope, they all go down in the end here. Yeah, the, the, the Dragon Knight definitely helping out over there. And yeah, Illidan being not too uh, overcommitting in those fights. I really like that because a lot of Illidans uh, overcommit too hard in uh, these kinds of fights. Yeah, he's doing a really good job here, and I mean, this is some really solid pressure incoming. Oh, nice hook here on the Dragon Knight, but not quite getting him in there. And he's also being supported by Illidan, so I don't think they can really grab him here. And there comes the block down there, but um, no one to actually pick him up. Yeah, I to heart can't really engage right now, they are not five people, but now it's we have false set flying in, so they might be able to pick up a good fight in the next 20 seconds. Oh, Stitches is kind of out of position, but the remainder of the i 2 team has to move in as well. And that fort still has a lot of energy, but I think they might actually get it. Nope, the Dragon Knight falls, and they should probably retreat, but a nice stun there by Arthas. But again, they're two levels behind, it's taking a lot of damage again. Arthas taking so much damage, the Ancestral Healing might come in. Nope, he gets out of there uh, too soon. Stitches falls. And after him, Rega goes down, now Valor on the retreat, and Illidan just takes her out in no time. Slimer in big trouble as well, and there comes the shock and awe, taking Tychus out. Wow, what an amazing teamfight here for Eye to Heart. 
Yeah, they really turned it around, in my opinion, because they didn't have that of a good position in the beginning of the fight, but I think the fact that they were two levels ahead helped them out a lot there. Yeah, I think so as well. I mean, there was a really solid stun coming in for Marcus, but that only really works if you do pick up an early kill and then have that 5 before fight. But if you're two levels behind, it's so hard to accomplish. They really need to sit back uh, look at their options here, and this might actually be a solid option. Getting a new Barak in this fight here, but oh, there comes the deep tunnel. Oh, Cinder goes are way too late. Um, they do get the minions, uh, the mercs, but that doesn't really help. Yeah. Oh, Illidan actually taking a lot of damage. Oh, it's really solid stun here on the retreat. Oh, Tassadar being picked up, but he gets away, of course, with the vulnerability. Arthas is again picked up alongside Stitches. They all just go down so quickly. Rhaegar falls. Vala again on the retreat. Can she get away? Well, might be possible, but no, she wants to save Tychus. That's a bad idea. And she falls, and everyone goes down. <sighs> I too hard is just steamrolling this game. Yeah, I think um, it depends a lot on the talents, actually. Um, the thing is, um, yeah. Vigas Radon isn't really able to pick off Illidan fast enough in those fights, I think, because you really have to burst Illidan down to kill him, because otherwise he's just gonna stay alive forever. But it's really hard uh, since, yeah, on Eitahard we have uh, Tassador and Uther, who will be able to heal massively. Oh, next Dragon Knight is coming in, Leoric is gearing up, and he's gonna jump in there before Stitches can do anything. Wow, what a fast pickup. They really used the fact that the entire Vega squadron was out. Um, that team fight really helped them out here to get the pickup. And there's the kick on Arthas, I think. Yeah. But they didn't get the camp, so uh, not. Oh, Arthas got picked off. I didn't even see that. That was very fast. Oh, and with Arthas out of this fight, uh, Vega squadron has to retreat. They can't really fight here. They have to lure him back in and maybe even engage them uh, closer to the keep. This is gonna be tough for them though. Yeah, they really need a solid hook by Stitches, by Dizzy. They have three levels behind and without Arthas. And against an easy camp and the Dragon Knights, no chance to defend. Oh, them. Dizzy completely out of position. There comes the stun from Anubarak and the nice body block to follow that up. Even Val can't do anything about this. And Tychus is being shrunk down. Um, they're taking out the next keep here. And we also have some easy mercs coming in uh, to help in this fight. Tychus doing some solid damage. Arf is back into the fray. The Auric taking a lot of damage here. But is it gonna be enough? There comes another good stun here by Colas. They're really doing a good job. And it's just one keep remaining for Vega Squadron. How are they gonna hold on and maybe turn this game around? I don't think it's possible at this point. Uh, four levels behind, just such a tough fight. I think they're just gonna snipe the Nexus as soon uh, as they maybe get another hero out of this nice Ooh. Divine Storm. Uh, we're actually a bit low right now. Yeah, but Arthas falls so quickly. <laughs> it's really hard to watch, actually. Yeah, th this is pretty much the definition of a ruff Ruffle Storm. And there's the 1 0 for I Too Hard. Yeah, very strong fights indeed. Uh, in the beginning it looked a little bit like Vegas Rodon is going to be able to um, actually hold back and yeah, come out ahead but they didn't manage to carry their early game advantage into the mid game and then they just lost all of the team fights. Yeah, I don't think Stitches is that solid of a pickup for them. We've not seen a solid hook from them at all. There was nothing incoming, and without those hooks, I think you're always gonna be on the back foot. Yeah. I mean, they did have a solid composition otherwise, but I do feel like you need that you need that initial pickup to really gain traction and get ahead in the team fights. Okay. Uh, do we have the next lobby already set up? Um, doesn't look like... no. No, not yet. Okay. So, do I have a... Let's see. I might actually have a replay, so um, let's check that out. It's probably only going to be the, the last fight there. But maybe we can 
clear up the, the troubles that they went through. Down um, their Alright, let's do this. Okay, yeah, it's only it's only gonna be the, the final fight here. And I mean everything is is really clumped up, so the uh, the heroic by Arthas would actually work here. But uh, I don't know, you need you need the heroic from Arthas, then you need the heroic, you need the Odin form out of Tychus, and then you need uh, stitches to be in there with the putrid bile to really make it work. And I think I to heart is really they're better than that. They're gonna move out as soon as they see that incoming. And that it also takes a lot of setup time to even even get that going. So this was already a four, four against five fight, and Leoric still being in that dragon form also um, gives him the armor to to be up close in front and not now just jump in if he if he needs to. And they never uh, really got a, a solid engagement angle here. Some good solid heals going down on Vala, keeping her alive. And there comes the Odin form out of Slimer. But I don't think he was actually able to do anything with it. Some real solid damage taken out um, on Uther. And, well, as the payback he just takes out Arthas uh, with Falstead here. And now again, uh, another warrior out. I mean, this is really the strength. If you're if you're four levels ahead, you can just go for those warriors and just kill the team fights. And yeah, from there on out, um, Vega put out a little bit of damage. They tried to get Ufer, but some solid shielding by Tassadar actually kept them alive for a long time. Um, Grimskull not taking too much damage there either. And, um, of course, Konus always with really solid stuns. Stitches again falling in this engagement and then the core went down. Everything just fine and dandy for eye to heart. Now, um, what can Waco Squadron uh, do in the, next, um, in the next match to make a po comeback possible? I think that they have to give more attention to the way the other team is playing because uh, they weren't able to really come out of the fights ahead because they adapted their talents to one specific playstyle but they weren't able to really yeah fulfill it they weren't able to just do what they want to do they should maybe go for uh, something more standard because I think actually Putrid Bile isn't really the right choice if you go for Stitches. You yeah. really need this Gorge. And I don't know, I mean, they... I'm just thinking why they possibly would go for Putrid Bile. Um, the Talon Gating bug, is that removed? Def I, I'm pretty sure because in the last... We've weeks, not seen it last week, right? Yeah. So I think it should be removed, otherwise... That might have been a reason for to go in uh, Putrid Bile. Uh, other than that, I'm not really sure why they would ever ever choose to do that. Uh, nevertheless, another reason might be the player's not really um, good enough with Stitches yet. But then they did only have uh, a single warrior pick on Eye to Heart's side, so they could have gone for any other warrior. They could have just picked uh, Shen or uh, Possibly Muradin even if, if they want to. I mean, uh, we've seen some solid Muradin play out of Well Met. I think Nomi uh, plays Muradin every once in a while. So you could even go, th go that way. Yeah. We already have the next lobby up, by the way. It, the map is going to be Cursed Hollow. Cursed Hollow and looks like the bands and picks are going to come up as well here right away. So this time, uh, Vega Squadron bans Tassadar. <laughs> and the with uh, Ben again. I'm. Uh, if somebody would told me that you should ban Abitha one month <laughs> before, <laughs> I would say, what the fuck? No one bans Abitha, but right now um, we got really some very good players on Abitha that make him work, because he certainly isn't an he easy hero to play. No, definitely not, but at least all the Aberthur plays I've seen last week were just fantastic. Um, 
I mean, he really won those games. Even even in the close games, he really he really made that strategy work um, with just solo lane pushing and um, picking picking the uh, right uh, evolution. I mean, uh, right right uh, master evolution, and then I don't know. But an Abathur playing the Abathur right is extremely hard. Yeah, but in the end, in, he can be so strong in the end game with uh, the locusts pushing. Uh, it's incredible, and even with the promote on the catapults, you will, you are able to do so much damage to keeps or the building, uh, the core. So yeah. All right, we have the first picks as well. Uther uh, being picked up here by Vega Squadron, so definitely a strong counter pick. Um, first pick was Uther in last game for I to Hard, so a really strong counter pick. However, um, yeah. Turiel and Tigus being counterpicked by, by Atuhard. Also, some really, really um, good initial pickups here. Okay, we got Arthas and Falset now for Vega Squadron. Um, uh, quite solid pickups, in my opinion. Uh, but of course, the Falset has to be uh, careful against the Turiel because his heroic is pretty damn good against him. Yeah, I gotta agree. Um, and again, if they if they go for uh, for Arthas, um, I think they have to do a little bit better uh, in the mid game. And especially with with the weird heroic choice we've seen last time, uh, I don't know if, if I've ever seen that work unless the team was already ahead uh, by two or three levels. Yeah, there are some points where it can be viable. For example, on uh what is it? Haunted, haunted Mines, uh, when you think that you'll be able to finish the game and you still have the other keep left and you push with the golem, you just use Syndragosa so the keep can't shoot. Mm -hmm. uh, that's some kind of viable, but other than that, it's really very positional and uh, not really the one you want to go for. Do you know if the Syndragosa works on the neutral minions in the mines as well? Ooh, I have not tested that. If but that, if that be works, yeah. that that would be interesting because that uh, might actually give some real reason to go Cinder Ghost on, on Haunted Mines. Yeah. But, but still, I think you have to uh, get the the skulls if they die. Only killing them is not enough. But of course, you would be way faster. Someone should check actually. <laughs> Okay, Nova and Stitch is the next pickups here for Vega. And uh, I see where they're going with this. I mean, they uh, they banned Tacita, now going for Nova. Um, pretty late as well, which kind of surprised me, but um, also makes sense. Uh, banning that Tacita, um, of course, with the Oracle, he would have the ability to just uh, detect these cloak heroes. So uh, Nova is definitely a really solid pickup here. Yeah, on the other side we have Anubarak. Um He's quite good uh, with Uther and Arth, of course, because of uh, so much uh, AoE uh, stun and root incoming there. So Falset will have an easy time casting his uh, heroic there, his shock and awe. Oh, I was actually a little bit confused since they switched uh, switched spots. Vega Squadron being on top now. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Never mind then. <laughs> okay. Let me get this right though. So she doesn't go there. He goes here. Nevertheless, some um, good pickups for Vega Squadron, and they have one final pick left. They, uh, they have to go for damage and... Yeah, they need damage. The Zebu is a good choice here. They've got some heal at least. If it's, if he's in trouble, Uther can somehow save him. And on the other hand, they have enough front line to actually yeah, block the others away from him. So we're going to see Brightwing out of Eye to Heart or are they going to go Rhaegar? Hmm. Okay, so we are going to play on Cursed Hollow. Brightwing can be very viable there. 
Oh, and you were right. I I did actually expect Rega, but um, Brightwing definitely a good choice as well here. Yeah, on, on Cursed Hollow, um, she I like her because you can um, you can use the pushback ability really well um, in uh, attribution to these tributes. Yeah. All right, so. Um, looks like everyone's ready and we can get going, right? Nope, not ready yet. 7 out of 10. Hmm. We're ready. Yeah, um, so the problem may be uh, with Brightwing that he isn't really able to heal Nova that much. Because, yeah, normally no Nova gets bursted down pretty quickly because she's so squishy. But aside from that, I think Brightwing is a good heal for the whole team. What do you think about the Nazebo pickup? Actually, I think it's quite solid here. Um, even though they are playing against Stitches and Turrell, if he has the right position um, for his heroic, um, it can definitely uh, decide the fight in favor for Vegas Dragon. Yeah. Um, um also some really good um, zoning potential with him, with the zombie wall um, and with his heroic, of course. Um, really nice way to um, to start the disengage on the tributes as well. And I think if they do get these early tribute pickups, everything can just snowball out of control with Nazebo uh, if you play it right. But of course, you need you need the you need to get those engagements just right at the tributes and. Um, I think this is going to be where the trouble comes in uh, if they can't manage to do that uh, in the early game. Okay, so let's get started here. On the left side, we have again as the blue team here on Cursed Hollow, I Too Hard, and they have Brightwing, Turiel, Nova, Stitches, and Tychus. And on the other hand, we have our red team with Falstad, Zebo, Anubarak, Ufer, and Arthas. And they are Vega Squadron. So and everyone's just, yeah, everyone's just moving in the mid lane here. And we have a solid gang squad. No, I think they're gonna redistribute along these lanes, pick up the watchtower in the meantime. But on the other hand, I too hard is gearing up to uh, to put on some ganking potential here. Oh, first decoy going down here, but nothing big really happening. No good hook so far. Such as being a little bit out of position. But uh, by the way, I'm a little bit surprised actually that Nazibo is going for the mid lane because it's quite dangerous over there. I would have expected him to go on the bot lane, but yeah. let's see. Felsen on top uh, makes sense against Brightwing. Um, they're duking it out uh, up there. And I think Felsen does have the upper hand here. Um, he should put on some, some solid pressure. Oh, let's check it out. Stitches was gonna go for something here, but Ufer is uh, is on the follow-up. And there comes the solid stun. Nubarak not really hitting anything here. And Arp is taking a lot of damage and he's being surrounded. Wow! Early game pickup again for I Too Hard. And they're Oh, there is uh, Ufer taking the fall. Yeah, very, very good team play over here. We even had Brightwing jumping in in the end. Uh, maybe a little bit overkill, but uh, who really cares if they get two kills off? Um, yeah, they were. Everybody just uh, s suddenly was in the fight, although they were on lanes uh, just yeah. some seconds before. Really good job. I mean, uh, they didn't lose that much XP with it either, so uh, that was a uh, real good decision making here on I2 Hearts part. And it looks like we're gonna get both of the easy camps being crept now. Yep, yeah. already being taken here um, by I2 Heart, and Vegas Squadron is on it as well. And just a level difference, so those two early game pickups really worked out uh, well so far for I2 Heart. And wow, it's taking Uther and Anoop a really long time to grab these camps. So um, they are out of position a little bit here, which means I to Heart can't put on the pressure. And Nazebo might be in trouble here. Really solid hook out of Leoric. And oh, Tyrael moves in, but they don't quite grab him in the end. Okay, um, 
So we have Bright being picked up by Falset and Brightwing. Um, I think they're gonna get uh, this, uh, probably the hard camp a little bit later uh, with the help of some others. But let's see. First both. tribute is spawning now. Yeah, first tribute is coming up. Um, gotta say, both teams could be in a good position to take this. Uh, maybe a little bit better here for Vega Squadron since it's on their side of the map. But I2 Heart is already moving into position. Uh, we have Tyrael moving alongside here. And a noob. Real sneaky there behind everything. Um, I don't think he can be scouted out here by I2 Heart. Nope. No way. And everyone's just <laughs> waiting. <laughs> yeah. Nothing happening at all right here. Yeah, but looks and there like comes the moving by Tyrael. Ooh, I don't think Vega has seen it. There comes the stun. So, a uh, good stun here by, by Noob. But now he needs that stun again in the next team fight. So they have to wait a little bit longer to engage here. And Tyrell tries again, channels again. And this is really where Nazebo's strength comes in. I mean, he can just put on the pressure on this tribute. And I don't think they're ever going to be able to channel long enough to get it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> this is the weirdest tribute fight I've ever seen, I gotta say. <laughs> it's no fight at all. No. <laughs> but, oh, and the... Um, Hook misses again, and we now see a false set and uh, Brightwing going on the lane again because they don't want to lose any more experience. It's <laughs> <laughs> so funny. This is nuts. I mean, uh, Tyrael, uh, he always tries to go for it, but then we have the stun by a noob. Uh, Nazebo is kind of out of position right now, so he can't get in there to uh, disrupt the, the channeling. But, I mean, Anoop and Uther are enough to stop this here. Oh, solid hook! Leoric picking up Uther, but Nazebo is down there. He helps out, and, whoa, both Leoric and uh, Tyrael trapped there inside the zombie wall. Really good zombie wall out of, out of green here. And uh, that Nazebo uh, pickup already making it count. I think I to Heart is gonna get out a little bit of head ahead of this. Uh, since they have Nova, they can easily snipe someone. What? Oh, another stun! And wow, just in time. Oh, good deep dive uh, out of Bastro. Yeah, we. Uh, before we had uh, uh, Tychus chasing Arthur's way too hard on the bot lane, and he got killed by the towers as it looked. Like. And the zombie wall, wow, that was some clutch timing out of green. He got that zombie wall down just in time to stop uh, to stop the channeling. And a lot of pressure coming in here on Le Leoric, but Brightwing is there to heal him up. They, s they might still get him, nope. There Ooh. comes the enchant on Uther, but a noob is picked up. And the tribute has been picked up. First wow. tribute. Now <laughs> How did they manage that? I totally missed that now in the team fight. I'm not quite sure either, but um, yeah, Vegas Rodon wasn't able to get any hero near there when the team fight when the fight started with uh, Stitches. But now they get the hard camp, and I to Heart is gonna get the hard camp as well because yeah, I think Brightwing is gonna bribe there very soon now. Vegas Squadron gearing up to take the boss. Um, I don't know if they do have the time to do it. Um, Stitches right now and Brightwing out of position, so. I yeah, they, sh they can probably pick it up with no real pressure since Arthas and the Zebo are still in their lanes. Uh, Nova's gonna come and check though. Maybe she maybe she sees it. Nope, not moving in position yet. Maybe wants to put on a little bit more pressure in the top lane. She is gonna scout, scout it out now, but uh, it's already too late. I to Heart is moving into position, but I doubt it's gonna work. Oh, they really need to get that final kill. Really solid stuns coming in. Whoa, might be the pickup here for Nova! Wow! That's incredible! There comes the Shock and Awe, and wow, the Heroic by Nazebo going down, they want to get Konus. And False that has even died, I cannot believe it, wow. and I to Heart gets the camp. <laughs> what an impeccable timing out of I to Heart. And Konus even being saved, he can, he can go channel the tribute now just to top it off. What a fight. What an impeccable timing out of Ito Hard. Tyrell has to go back there. Oh, ni very nice hook here on Arthas, but I think he's still gonna be able to get away there. Yeah, another enchant on him, but he gets away a noob, taking a lot of damage, but there comes the deep dive, he goes out. And they have the boss in the top lane now, they have to stop him, but they're all pretty low, especially a noob. He does have to uh, dive a little bit deeper and um, save himself there. I think they're gonna grab this top fort, no problems.
Yeah, and the Odin form from Tigus is still up. Oh, so good zoning here out of green. Tigus can actually pass through there, and the boss is gonna fall. Ooh, a noob! Being picked up, but he gets away. Yeah, he's definitely not the perfect hook target, because he's just gonna be right back on his position. Yeah, I mean you can hook him if he uh, if he just um, if he just deep up um, deep deep dived into the fight, but not afterwards. Uh, Ford is still standing here, but Brightwing and Tyrion are returning now, so I think they're gonna get the kill here. Yeah, yep, with and the there it falls. Side. Oh, and the gorge on Arthur's right here. He's gonna. Oh, yeah, they're gonna grab him. Easy target, um, completely surrounded there uh, by Stitches and Tyrael. And, and now they might be in a good position to pick up the tribute as well. Yeah, it's the important tribute, the third tribute Oh, look tribute at this, here. look at this! They're gonna grab the Zeebo, he has no chance. And Anoop is in trouble as well, again deep diving out of it. Oh uh, wow, what a solid pickup. And uh, did they get the tribute behind this? I think they did. Right? Yeah, false that grabbed it. Very sneaky. Wow, I2 Heart is just on top of things. I mean, um, showing some really strong play here. They're definitely really a top contender uh, in the HBO. Yeah, getting the, first, uh, the second port without any problems and now being two levels ahead already. It's quite strong. And it seems like they are going to go for their boss. That might be a little bit risky because I think Vegas Rodon knows that they will try to. Oh, but really nice trap they are setting up here. And Arthas runs oh. into it. Yeah, he runs right into it. There comes the sandwich. Good body blocking. False set. Amazing shock and all out of Slimer. And they get one. Tyrael goes down though. And oh, Brightwing taking a lot of damage and she's taken out, but Stitches falls as well. The nice trap. turnaround here. They might even get Grimskull. He's on the retreat. And there comes the deep dive out of a noob. Just one stun and he should fall. Wow, nice turnaround making it happen here for Vega Squadron. And now they can go for that golem. But Nova is still alive. How did she manage to do that? I think she was just uh, far away uh, enough. Maybe. Oh, she's got to go Ooh. for the snipe here. But the poison still clocks. Okay. Very nice heal here. Green coming. pretty low. I think he needs to get out of there ASAP. Oh. And there comes the sniper out of Noisen. Very nice. But on the other hand, uh, Falset is grabbing the tribute. So they'll be fine and have the chance to get the third tribute themselves afterwards. You gotta give it to Falset. He really saved that last, last fight. Without that amazing shock and awe, catching three heroes completely off guard, they never would have taken that fight. I mean, that was an amazing trap set up by eye to heart and he just rocked it. Yeah, really re well countered over there, for sure. Um, it, and I think Falset is extremely good in this game, uh, especially because uh, he's so viable in getting the tributes. He's, he can just fly there, get the tribute, and he's gonna get out of it with another tribute. And it looks like... Ah, uh, no. No other team fight coming up here. Itohart doesn't want to engage into the hard camp and all of the five heroes. Ooh, they're just a little bit out of position here on the right side. Maybe they can get a pick up. And Arthur's doing a good job stopping the uh, stopping the retreat so far. And Stitches, he's completely sandwiched in these heroes. But there comes the engage out of Tyrael. He goes straight for Nazebo. Another good shock and off, but not quite hitting the right amount of targets. And there comes Nova and Ufer. Nice solid composition, but uh, in the end, only Stitches beat uh, and only Ufer falling so far. Now Nazebo and Falset go down as well. Tyrael tanking a lot of damage, and he goes down as well. Might get a pick up out of a noob? Nope. They were diving way too deep in the end. Um, but it was still worth. I was like in the beginning, okay, Stitches, you know that there is a fort, you cannot escape. But they somehow managed to kill almost the entire team from Vegas Rodon. And now they get the third tribute. Although they are kind of even on levels right now. Yeah, I think uh, Vegas Squadron should have taken a little bit more easy on in that last fight because um, otherwise they, they might have picked up the tribute and it would totally be a different deal right now 
Um, just not overextend so much. And the Zebo was completely out of position for them. And um, everything just fell apart after uh, after Uther went down. Yeah. So some nice focus firing out of I2 Hard. We got and they're the gonna grab the boss here. Yeah, yeah, but we got the clear wines coming in from Wiggers for and they not know exactly what is going on. They might even gonna get the boss. Ah, no, not fast now. Oh, Uther being totally out of position, but very nice Divine Storm, but he still dies. Very, oh, very the good. Oh, he's so low, and he gets the kill on, on a noob. Wow. And uh, Abathur, he's, um, uh, Arthur, he's in there, and he puts out some decent damage. Following the following noise in here, but he's not gonna grab that final kill. Zebo trying to help him out, but never mind, he still falls in the end. But traps Brightwing in there. Wow, she's taking a lot of damage. Ooh, and in three for three. In almost all of the fights now, we saw um, the ice block from Nazebo. It certainly worked out sometimes. Um, I'm not really the biggest fan of it, but uh, he some somehow makes it work, actually. And the boss is still putting out some, a good amount of damage here on the top key. Um, looks like Falstead and Nazebo can take him out eventually, though. Yeah. Uh, Getting some sound issues right now. I don't know if it's uh, if you can hear it on stream. I hope not. And hard camp being taken here by Brightwing and Nova, just easily dealing with these hard mercs. Yeah, the next clear ones here from Uther. They almost always know uh, where the opposing team is. Very nicely done here by him. Oh, and Stitches misses the hook over there. Um, that would have been a kill for sure. Yeah, I mean, Stitches, um, I think Leoric is definitely a lot better uh, on the Stitches than we've seen in the Out of Vegas Squadron. Yeah. But, um, I mean, he didn't pick up these amazing initiations yet, so um, maybe a little bit more, I don't know, maybe he has to go for a little bit more of these uh, guess hooks, you know, where he just goes for the usual spots where heroes hide. Yeah. Oh, and the next clear point, so... Vegas Squadron knows that Eidhart is on the bottom lane. Oh, and Sitch is being a little bit out of position there. Oh, there comes the kill on Arthas so quickly here. And Nova's following that up. They're taking a lot of damage though, and a nice stun out of Evil Bastro. Getting Tyrael here, and Brightwing also incredibly low. But a nuke falls, and Fels that can he get away? Yes, he can. Oh, but Brightwing, is Uther gonna be able to kill him? Ah, oh, the heels. Oh. Wow. Incredibly close here for Brightwing. Oh, Just and Falstead still more falls. falls. Oh my god, Nova Wait, was how, able how to did they pick, pick up Falstead? Nova was able with the snipe. Oh my goodness. Uh, he went straight for the, towards the middle keep there uh, to stay safe, but yeah, I guess uh, maybe not the best choice. Not the safest retreat, perhaps, uh, especially if you have Nova in there. And now it's four against zero. Arthas is back. Maybe they can snipe the Nexus before the entire team comes back. Cooldown's still about 12 seconds here on Ufer, and they definitely need Ufer to take this fight. Uh, Core is at 80%, and they're taking some damage here. Leoric uh, almost down to 30%. There comes, there comes the ultimate out of Nova. Uh, and yeah, they're Leoric gonna get falls. It. Yeah, they're gonna get it. They're gonna get it, nevertheless. Uh, very well played again. By I2 Heart here. And 2 0 for I2 Heart. I mean, we knew that they were definitely uh, the top contender, but this was uh, a little bit surprising. I mean, this the second game was a little bit closer than the first one, so uh, we gotta give him that. But still, uh, not the fight I would have hoped, were, hoped for for uh, Vega. Yeah, I think um, Vega Squadron could have been able to do more because there were certainly some good, um, some very good fights for them. But in the end, they weren't able to yeah carry that advantage they got from like one, one or yeah two fights, and they weren't able to ca carry it into the game and come out ahead really. Yeah, they they weren't really ever uh, close to be 
the better team overall, but they certainly had some good moments. <laughs> 